All right, get up on the hood of this one. Some Fast and Furious stuff right here. You can see we're moving at such crazy speeds. Oh my goodness. All right, we're going to hijack this truck. Excuse me, sir. Now let's see if we can get this one. It's going to be a big jump. It's going to be a big jump. It's going to be a big jump. Jump. What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic and uh, I'm pretty excited today because this is uh, another build that I started in a stream there and I uh, actually pretty much finished the stream but I did go back and make a few changes to it and uh, that is of course this truck right here, this is the cruise control truck and so you know I mean it could have been a car, it could have been whatever but uh, you can see there we've got a lot of engines in there and a lot of buttons but it is a truck that has five different independent speeds and it runs with a little bit of a, an axle there. You can see we just have to have a, a kind of a fixed axle running between the two wheels. And so it's got five different speeds and at any point in time you can hit the two switch and uh, set the cruise control. So now I'm actually just steering the truck but it'll continue to drive around. And you know it, it's quite awesome. You can see there we can, we can let off and it'll slow down. Uh, we can go to one of the slower speeds here. So you can see those lights in the bed indicate which speed you're on. So it's really easy to tell from left to right, first to fifth speed. And uh, you see there we can troll along at a nice slow speed. And all we're doing here, you can see on that back axle, is there's five different bearings. Uh, if we can get a good camera. You know what? Let's just, let's just let the truck run. So there's five different bearings on this axle. And you can see there, those five bearings are each hooked in to one of these five electric motors. And by stacking the bearings like that, we're basically stacking the speed. So at speed one, you have one engine engaged. And at speed two, you have two engines and so on and so forth. And uh, the truck just rolls. Oh, goodness, it's going to hit a rock. It just rolls quite nicely, you can see, along the terrain using that axle, which surprisingly gets decent grip. And, uh, you know, it actually works well. You know, pretty simple. I mean, we just, we just drive around. You can hold W, turn off the cruise there. And uh, we'll just ramp up the speed there. You can see there, this is the fastest speed. Now, there are some collision issues, obviously, with the uh, with the axle and the gearing. So sometimes you'll hear it there, it'll skip. And uh, you can't really go much faster than this. I've tried, it just skips, and you only really get this kind of speed out of it. But uh, we can slow down a little bit, and then we can hit that one key. Turns on the reverse lights, and you can see it'll actually just shift the axle over. And now it'll run the gear on the other side. So we can go in reverse, sort of in the same way. And, I mean, that's not really how you, how you should do it, but... Uh, in order to save space, it actually works quite well, just pushing it over there. And then you can see there is actually a lock bar that comes down in behind here. This lock bar here comes down to block this piston in place. Um, I found this piston with the force on this wheel was actually just kind of getting jammed to the middle and it wasn't always delivering the power to the axle. So by forcing that position in, it uh, you can keep that power delivered. But you can just basically look at the back end there. There wasn't, uh, I didn't have this indicator before in the stream and I realized it was really hard to tell what gear you were in sometimes. So you can just kind of get it balanced there. Oh, didn't want to hit reverse. And when it lights up one of them, you can hit two and it'll lock it at that position. And now you can see we're driving in second gear. And then we can uh, just turn that off and hit uh, W again and get it in third gear, right? And then of course we can do it even more and get it, oh no, still in third gear, get it in fourth gear. Now I notice the differential between third, fourth, and fifth is not as high as the differential between first, second, and third. You can still see a slight increase in speed there between, uh, you know, third and fourth, but uh, between fourth and fifth especially, you can see here, here's fourth, oh, I missed, I missed a gear completely there. Here's, here's fifth, right? And you can see if we slow down to fourth, just uh, ramp it up to, well, get it on fourth there, there we go. You can see it's slightly slower, but it's very difficult to tell. And I think what's happening is the faster it speeds with all five bearings uh, spinning is the faster that they're the, the two pieces, the two gears are colliding. And, you know, thus it, it means that at that point in time, you'd be getting a lot more collisions that are missing and not actually happening. So you're not necessarily getting all the power to the axle, but, you know, just great for cruising around. Really easy, you know, just to... Uh, set it and forget it. We've got some lights there on the front. I think I had those in the stream. I'm not terribly sure. That's just with the three key. And then of course the four key is my favorite, which is uh, the e-brake. And so if you hit the four key, it just jams two pistons there, two little pillars into those back gears and completely stops those back tires, which uh, gives you a really, really strong braking power. Those back tires just completely lock up. You can see there, and we'll come to a complete stop. And so I kind of really like how that works. But I also really like the fact that, you know, you can 
if you're driving through this stuff, you can kind of just slow it down and set it to that second speed. Because I know one of the biggest problems in Scrap Mechanic is, you know, the lack of a variable fr throttle. And so when you're trying to make a creation, you can drive corners slowly. You just have to kind of let off the throttle and then go back on the throttle. But, um, you know, with this kind of weird cruise control setup, you can, uh, you know, just use some gradual throttles and just, you know, coast along there. Just in case you guys didn't see the stream, though, you can obviously, you can go see the stream if you want to watch the full building process. But I can show you basically how this mechanism works. And uh, really, this is the hull of the truck without the truck body and uh, without those indicator lights. But basically what's happening is we've got the five lights here on the side. And underneath these motors, there's five memory bits. It's a little bit messy to look at. And what's happening is when you hit this light here, you're setting this bit and resetting the other four bits. And same sense when you hit this next sensor and so on and so forth. And then there's also a sensor here way under the seat at the zero position. And that's when the piston's completely retracted. And if you hit that sensor, it resets all the bits. So what's happening is as you hold W, because we can hook the seat into a controller. And so the controller activates the piston as you hold W and that's causing the piston to extend out, which is in turn telling the motors to fire up one at a time. And if we let go of W, you can see that the motors will shut off one at a time. And so when we hit two, the piston will continue to retract, but you can see that memory bit on the side there, that bit that's grayed out is actually the one that's active. And you can see that it's still locked in position until we let off two and that actually triggers the reset signal. And so that's basically how the cruise control works. The piston itself is retracted to zero, which means when you let off the cruise, you go straight to zero throttle, unless you're holding W at the time you let off the cruise. You know, overall, it drives really, really well for a gear car. Um, you know, I, I'm really digging this fixed axle thing. I like how the small pipes interact really well with each other. Obviously, it's a little bit more difficult to do gearing ratios, but, uh, you know, pretty, pretty cool stuff. And yeah, they lag like crazy when you put them next to each other. But... You know, not too complicated to build. Um, I didn't really, you know, have too much else to say about it, to be honest. You can see there, you know, very consistent driving. Uh, we can drive, let's see if we can drive two cars. All right, so let's get out of this one. Jump, okay, perfect. And then we're gonna steer you towards the gap there a little bit. Okay, and then we're gonna get out and then get get out, get, get out and then jump to that one. Oh, oh, made it, okay. And then we're gonna steer you towards the gap there a little bit. Oh yeah, perfect. Perfect. This is going to go super well. I, I can see it already. Oh boy. No, that one's going towards the tree. That one just hit a tree. Okay, we got to recover this one. Reverse, reverse. You can also engage reverse while it's still in cruise control, which is obviously very, very silly. Um, but, you know, why why not be able to do that? Come on. There we go. Snap into place. That one's going to hit a rock now. We got to catch up. All right, so we are on a flat map. And what we're gonna do, we've got two trucks so far. We're on the very edge of the map. You can see here we're on the very the very edge wall. And so we're gonna start this truck up in the slowest speed. We're gonna catch this truck up. Then we're gonna jump off, get another truck. And we're gonna try and see how many trucks we can get in a line before we get to the other edge of the map. Okay, so here we go. So start this one up really slow. Perfect, in first gear, jump out, jump, jump out. Sometimes it doesn't want to pop. Oh boy, this is gonna be the hardest part I think is getting off the trucks and getting them caught up. Okay, so let's get to the next one. Oh no, I didn't want that. Here we go, let's catch up here. Oh, look at that, that was that was perfect cruise catching. Okay, let's make sure we can jump between them here. Get out here. Oh yeah, perfect. Okay, let's get the next one. Of course, I do have this facing the wrong way every time, but that's okay. Oh my goodness. There we go. Alright, let's catch up to these. This is three. I think, you know what, this is good. This is good. We're doing good. Alright, let's do this. Catch this one up. Oh, no, that was reverse gear. I didn't want to hit reverse. Okay, cruise. Nope, missed it. See, sometimes that first gear is very, very difficult to get. Alright, it's a little bit ahead, but you know what? Uh, that'll do. You know, cruise control is so convenient. You could send an entire army of trucks at your friends and they would have no idea they would they would assume that it's just an army of mechanics driving super slowly towards them in very unmenacing trucks when in reality it's just it's just one dude who had to spend way too much time doing a lot of setup to make this all work all right let's uh, get this up here nope too much too much slow down okay there we go perfect okay so these two are getting a little bit close to each other we gotta we gotta veer them apart a little bit so let's Jump in. Oh, we missed that jump. That's okay. Oh, those two on the end are getting too close together. Oh, boy. We gotta fix that situation. 
That is a laggy situation right there. That's what that is. Okay, that was like next to perfect. I mean, a little bit further ahead. Okay, let's just come on. No, 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 guys. No, no. This is not, not ha. This is not. This is not good. No, come here. No, no, no one do that. Come here. Okay, let's turn you away. Yeah, they they have a lot of bearings on them, and uh, obviously they've got some suspension. And uh, I think the combination of all the bearings and suspension and everything that's going on really just they don't they don't like hitting each other, but. Okay, let's do this. Jump one to two. Okay, perfect. Get up on here. Jump. Oh, son of a. Okay, let's do this again. We're gonna jump across all five before we before we get to the next truck. Okay, here we go. Jump. Perfect. Okay. Jump. Oh man, on the tire. Get up. Get up. Get up. Oh, close. All right, we gotta do this, guys. We gotta do this before we hit the wall. Jump. Okay, perfect. Jump. Oh, why did I hit the engine? All right, jump. Yes, jump. Amazing. Just uh, take you over here. Alright, get up on the hood of this one. Some Fast and Furious stuff right here. You can see we're moving at such crazy speeds. Oh my goodness. Alright, we're going to hijack this truck. Excuse me, sir. Now let's see if we can get this one. It's going to be a big jump. going to be a big jump. going to be a big jump. Jump. Yes. I mean, kind of jump and slip through the window, and then we're just gonna... How, how close are we to the edge of the wall here? You know what? We weren't that close. But, uh, you know, if you ever want some cruise control vehicles, definitely check this out on the workshop. Um, I'm sure there's a hundred different ways to do this. And, uh, like I said, you could probably do this all with logic without having to use the piston. But this is just the way I wanted to do it, and I thought it was kind of cool. But uh, make sure you guys hit that like button down below if you like this kind of thing. And uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already for more scrap mechanic. But uh, I'm a really big fan of this truck, like I said. And uh, I'd like to do more projects like this with sort of kind of cool little simple systems that kind of enhance a vehicle. Uh, but again, you know, you are limited by the speed of this gear. So make sure you guys check this out on the workshop and uh, make sure you hit that like button. And make sure you go check out my Discord server. It is still up. Links for that all in the description below. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time.